Every curious mind has lots of unanswered questions about our universe and celestial bodies. So, let's begin the question answer session. So, what are asteroids and from where do they come from? Asteroids are believed to be fragmented uh, dwarf planets or planet symbols. So, they 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 came from that belt between that there it was it's believed that there there were many such uh, planetesimals or, or small planets between Mars and Jupiter yeah. and uh, they fragmented either because they collided with each other or because the gravitational tug of Jupiter and the tidal effects caused their breakup. That's why they're found in a dense belt between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter. So and uh, what is the largest size of asteroid till date found or discovered? What is it? A few hundred kilometers? Yeah, a few hundred kilometers. It's a few hundred kilometers, the order of a few hundred kilometers. Thank you so much. Yeah. And the Kuiper belt formed due to such a similar action. Thought to be, but there's a difference. Huh? I don't know exactly what the difference is between the asteroid belt and the Kuiper belt, but yeah, similar. Broadly, but there are, uh, there, are there are major differences, yeah. I had a question that uh, you said the asteroids are part of the planet. Not so part, break up yeah. fragments yeah. of planet. Fragments yeah. of the planet. But are these planets of our solar system? Also? Yes, between Mars and Jupiter. So, they are fragments of Jupiter? No, it is thought that there was a dwarf planet between Mars and Jupiter or, or a few smaller such objects between Mars and Jupiter that either, either collided with each other and started breaking off or because Jupiter is so big it causes the small object to just tear itself apart. Sir, I have a question that can uh, asteroids have moons? No. Too small. They're too small to... I mean, moons have been broken off from the... Uh, generally from the parent planet. What? These fellows are just uh, 100 kilometers. Well, in principle, a 100 kilometer object can have a 5 kilometer moon. Hmm. But uh, you would no longer consider that a moon. You would just say it's a piece of space debris which is floating there. And Satellites is a better word to use. Anything can have a satellite. Right? You know that there's a lot of debris floating around the Earth, which has been left behind by astronauts, uh, cosmonauts out there. So similarly, you can have small objects circling these asteroids, but nothing substantial because they're small themselves. And also, this is related to one of the questions that was asked pre previously about uh, Pluto not clearing its environment. You have to be large enough, as he explained, you have to be large enough that you attract someone. And outside the sphere of influence, it has to be relatively empty. If you're too small, then you, you don't really have much of a sphere of influence. You're just in the crowd. So you really cannot call that a satellite or this a satellite. Well, if, if, if that, that fellow is your satellite, maybe he, he or she is a satellite of the other fellow also. What is asteroid building? You have already answered yeah, answer this. Uh, Let's I want to ask that, uh, why is it not between any other planets? Why only Mars and Jupiter? Is it because inner and outer are... <laughs> <laughs> this is the kind of coincidence which which uh, uh, interests lots of astronomers. It's probably just a coincidence. You know, see, this is just a purely an observational thing. It is indeed uh, used as a demarcation between inner and outer. But why inner and outer? And, and I, well, I mean, why just there in that special place? Difficult to say. Hard, hard question. Don't know. Sir, what is a meteor shower? We pass, the Earth's orbit passes through a large population of, of these objects, okay, which happen to be sitting around in, in, in certain places. And when, uh, when that happens, many of them pass through the Earth's atmosphere and they burn up and we see a large collection of, of shooting stars. Uh, and because the dynamics of these objects are well known, we know when we will be passing through them. So we can predict when the meteor showers are going to happen to within an accuracy of a, maybe a day or two. So, for example, if there's an object which is broken up because of gravitational influence or others, so an object like this will break up into 20 pieces, but because of Newton's law of inertia, they'll continue to move together. They'll break up a little bit split apart a little bit, but they'll continue to move along more or less the same trajectory, right? So there would be lots of, lot of such objects which travel in clumps, right? Especially from the asteroid belt. So when some one of them passes 
across the Earth's orbit, and when Earth moves into one of them, you'll get a cluster of meteorites falling in, and that's the meteorite shower. Yeah.